Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. I'm your host, Patson, and today we're going to be taking a look at r slash pro revenge, where OP was actually successful in convincing his cheating girlfriend and the affair partner that they were both crazy. Oh boy. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Let's begin. When your ex tells you to move out while she's on a work trip because the guy she cheated on you with is moving in, you get very creative moving out. Posted by Reddit user DJ Duke of Spook. I did this to an ex who asked me to move out while she was on a work trip and told me she was coming back with her new boyfriend. We were still together when she left. I got these little noisemakers, battery-powered ones the size of a quarter that emit sounds at just the right volume that you aren't sure if you really heard it. So quiet that two people could be sitting in an average-sized room and while one can barely hear it the other wouldn't hear a thing. They last ages and fit perfectly in light fixtures and in wall outlets. I got a box of 20 of them for like $100 on eBay and got so creative all over the house, her car, I even hid them in a boat her father got her, rich family and she grew up sailing. Now these little bastards make a noise at complete random intervals, could be minutes, could be hours, could take a whole day off. They cycle noises like children laughing, a dying breath as they called it, a whistle, scratching noises, some other ones I can't remember but you get the idea. It was so unpredictable it was near impossible for someone to just figure it out. Months go by, I get a new place, get my life back up. Now we had a few friends in common and one of them I kept up with. They were kinda sour about how she ended things but they had grown up together and kept up the friendship, loosely talking and catching up on occasion. I never really asked about her, but one day we get to talking and he's wanting to prank some friends on a camping trip so I tell him about the noisemakers. As I'm telling him about them, he slowly starts making this face, like he's gradually losing his shit. He's got this huge grin on his face and asks me you put these in your ex's shit didn't you? And when I admit he starts laughing hysterically. Turns out her new boyfriend had only lasted a few months and had left telling her that he couldn't handle whatever was going on with them and their mental states. Turns out for a while they had both heard things and sometimes only one would hear them, which gave the illusion that something is really fucked with them was going on in their heads at different times. They couldn't figure it out and eventually he wanted out completely. And having run down all the crazy list of shit people who are hearing voices would think ended it believing he had been infected with some brain worm the government was putting in vaccines or something like that. It was amazing. I hadn't expected to hear anything about it. I rode that train for weeks. When it went away I got another hit of that high. She moved out, told her parents she didn't want the house and to give it to her brother or sell it. Wouldn't tell them why. I always tell people who ask about her that I hold no grudge, and don't tell them the part where I totally fucked with her so bad, I overshot the got her backstage and hit the blissful state of satisfied with my work. My wife knows this story by heart because it's her favorite one to tell. Update. In some ways I'm not too proud of this, it was a long time ago and I was in a really dark place, the whole event just tipped me and I responded in a no fucks to give state the best I could, by just being a menace. She also did it all through a short impersonal email that just sucked ass. I'm not saying that's all an excuse, just some context. Also, the house was purged of the devices after she left. I let her brother in on it because they weren't close at all and he lived with their mom most his life. We were close because we gamed together and he was able to find all but two of them. He ended up using them for other pranks for a long time. P.S. As far as the original noise chips I got they were a very simple board build I got from some guy on eBay ages ago so I can't track down a direct link and I don't think he is on eBay anymore. I'm seeing a lot of references to one called the Anoyatron on Think, and it sounds like it was probably the influence behind the ones I got or vice versa. I encourage anyone who wants them to hunt on eBay or even Etsy. They were pretty simple and I can imagine someone out there still makes them. Also, I would say see if you can make them yourself. There might be some DIY guides for it out there. I'll see what else I can find. OP you may not be proud about what you did, but we certainly are. A lot of us this, dude. On a scale of 1 to impressive, this is right up there with legendary. This has got to be one of the funniest things to happen to a cheater. Screwing with someone's emotions just goes to show that you know your shit when it comes to emotional warfare. The best part is, they didn't even know that a war was going on. 10 out of 10, 100% OP. This is true pro-revenge. <laughs> now for today's second story. My 8 pound 50 cent revenge on my cheating, thieving ex. Posted by Reddit user Revolutionary and 209 When I was at university, I started dating this guy. At first, he was wonderful. 
Dedicated to his studies, fun to be around, attentive, and always surprising me with things, working hard at his job etc. Then, bit by bit, things unraveled. He started skipping classes. Then he barely bothered to go at all. Worse still, he never helped around the house. Never washed up, cleaned up, did laundry, nothing. He was even fired from his job for too many no-shows. All he wanted to do was sit at home and play Xbox or browse the message boards and forums. This was in the days before social media, when dinosaurs roamed the earth. This left me having to pick up extra shifts, sometimes double and triple shifts, all while going to class and studying. I later learned that this was a pattern for him. He'd be really dedicated to whatever he set his heart on, but then get bored and fall back into old bad habits. Then he'd find a new passion and rinse and repeat. I knew I should have ended the relationship much sooner, but I held out hope that he would snap out of it, that maybe it was just exam stress getting to him. I desperately wanted things to go back to how they were, but it was not meant to be. I caught him cheating and threw him out. I was so stressed with everything that it wasn't until the next day that our joint savings account crossed my mind. There was a little over 5,000 pounds in there, and bar a few hundred from him, the rest was money I had saved. I checked the account, and it was all gone. My ex had cleaned out the account and moved into a new flat with his side chick. I called the bank. There was nothing they could do. He was authorized on the account. I contacted the police. They told me there was nothing they could do since it was a joint account, so nothing criminal had happened. They suggested taking it to civil court but said I'd probably spend more money than I got back in legal fees so it likely wasn't worth it. My ex had stolen 5,000 pounds and there was nothing I could do about it. I felt like such an idiot. I got even angrier when I saw his posts on various forums boasting about his new game consoles, new games, new TVs and gadgets. All bought with my money. I'm not usually a vengeful person. Petty on occasion, sure, but I've never wanted to exact revenge as much as I did right then. And I knew just how to do it. While I was a student, I tempt every summer to help pay for my studies. One such job had been for a debt collection agency. The work was as shitty as you can imagine, but it paid really well, and it was only for a few months. My ex had been dodging debt for many years, and he was very proud of that fact. He was also proud of the fact that his debt was close to being statute bar and he hadn't paid a penny. For those of you who don't know, in the UK, creditors have about six years to collect a debt, and then it becomes statute barred. That means the money is still owed but creditors have no legal way to enforce payment, such as using bailiffs. My ex was a few months away from reaching statute barred status. However, what a lot of people don't know is that making a payment on that debt resets the clock. If you pay any amount, then that six years starts from scratch. Previously, I had used my insider knowledge to help him dodge the debt. Now, I would use it to hit him where it hurt. By the end of our relationship, I was handling everything, including his debts. I had the paperwork, so I knew who he owed and how much. I called his creditors up. I was honest and said I was a friend calling to make a payment on his behalf. I didn't pretend to be him because that would be a big legal no-no. They weren't allowed to disclose any details, but they were able to take payment. I paid the minimum I could on each debt, about one pound on most, but one had a minimum payment of 1.50 pounds. It was the best 8.50 pounds I have ever spent. I also made sure to give them his new address and contact details, as well as his parents' address. Having worked in the biz, I knew they wouldn't change the address since I wasn't the account holder, but they would note it. They had various systems where they could search for his name against that address and see if anything came up. If they got a hit, they'd change the address. The trap was set. All I had to do was wait. A few months rolled by. Then it happened. His posts on the forums went from boasting about his new gaming PC to panic about a court date. He called me and begged for advice. I told him to EFF off. Seeing I wouldn't help, he asked for advice in the forums. One of his online friends told him not to turn up to court, that way they wouldn't be able to prosecute without him there. It was terrible advice that was 100% untrue. In fact, not showing up is one of the worst things you can do, especially in civil court. This was getting better and better. The court date came and went. My ex, naturally, didn't go. A few weeks later, my ex posted photos of his empty flat. Bailiffs had cleaned him out and taken every last one of his shiny new gadgets and toys. On top of that, he ended up with several county court judgments. These are a big deal and can seriously damage your credit history, making it hard to get bank accounts outside of basic ones, near impossible to get credit including getting a mortgage. And it can also make it hard to rent a place since many landlords don't like renting to people with CCJ as they're considered high risk. He also won't be able to find jobs in the financial sector. Now that he was broke and didn't have nice things, his side chick left him. I never got my 5,000 pounds back, but it felt good to see everything he bought with his ill-gotten gains taken away. 
hoped that £5,000 was worth it. For anyone wondering how a student accrued six years of debt, he started at the university I attended when he was 25. He had initially gone to a different university at 18, but dropped out at 19 and went into the world of work. Then he convinced his parents to fund a business degree. He wanted to become an entrepreneur. And for anyone worried about the age gap, I deferred my university start date by a few years so I could travel. I was 22 when we started dating. He was 26. Well OP, at least you learned a valuable lesson here too. No joint accounts. Ever. Even if you are married. It is too easy to cut and run otherwise. And nothing can be done about it. Of course, this won't stop an account from being cleaned out, but it can definitely be brought up in the divorce proceedings. Don't forget that lesson, my friend. Good luck. Viewer support is the best way for me to remain independent and continue bringing you these daily videos, which will always be here on my YouTube channel for you to watch absolutely free. So consider clicking that super thanks just below the video title, or you can use my PayPal in the description box down below. Thanks for listening everyone. If you even somewhat enjoyed today's story, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and if you really like it, make sure to subscribe to Patson to never miss a future upload. Stay strong.